Hello there, and welcome back to Champions Update. Uh, this time we're on the third issue. Just checking to make sure I put up three fingers. We're on our third issue. Uh, today is, or at least when I'm filming this, today is March 6th. I don't know if I'll get it done by March 7th, but we're going to try our best. As you know, or probably know, with each video I'm going to be trying to improve my quality and experiment with some new things. Uh, this video specifically, I've moved from my floor over there to my desk, uh, mainly for my comfort. Uh, and also, it's kind of a better scenery, I think. I don't know. Um, also, for this uh, installment of Champions Update, I don't have my computer with me. I have a nifty little uh, script here to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, this video, I'll also be splitting it up into two parts. Um, the plot, a somewhat detailed overview of the plot. Uh, I tried to make it short, but we're going to see how it turns out. And then the second part, which is my thoughts on the issue, which I'm sure you're dying to hear. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say for this intro besides, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so at the beginning of this Champions issue, we see this kind of scavenger space looking dude on a planet far, far away. And I say a planet far, far away because I really don't feel like repeating the whole title from the comic book and I didn't write it in my script. Um, and he's sort of like searching through this abandoned looking ship and he finds a capsule and he breaks into the capsule and from that capsule springs this woman who uh, we don't originally know the name of, but... She's talking about some crazy stuff, and she says nothing matters except for getting vengeance on Sam Alexander. And we know who that is. That's Nova, who is currently powerless. So, pray for your boy Sam Alexander. <laughs> now, I should know I haven't binge-read the Champion solos in, like, three years, so I can't remember if this woman was in one of Sam's solos. She might have been, so if you're wondering why I don't recognize her, uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. After we see the scary space woman, we see the champions, including some of their new uh, additions, such as Bombshell, Locust, etc., that we saw in the first issue, in the middle of a training exercise. And this training exercise, Sam is off to the side, and he looks very, very irritated that he can't be a part of this exercise. Once again, this issue deals with Sam dealing with the loss of his powers, aka his helmet, which happened back in Champions Infinity Countdown number two. I think. So while Sam's being all irritated, the other champions are fighting and they're really kind of showing off a bit, which I think irritates Sam even more. Uh, and Sam gets knocked sort of to the side and Kamala catches him with her powers, uh, which only seems to irritate him more, probably because he doesn't like the idea of being, of having to be saved. He wants to be able to save himself. We even get the sad line from Sam that he's going back to the bunker because he just gets in the way during the training exercise. When Sam heads back to the bunker, we see Miles, and the issue tells us that after the incident with Mephisto, Miles is being very cold and distant from the champions, another thing that only seems to hurt Sam more. Uh, we get a brief flashback, uh, not quite a flashback, but a continuation of a flashback, I guess you could say of uh, Miles and Mephisto's interaction at the end of issue one. If you don't remember, Mephisto sort of visited Miles to talk with him and that's when we get the first hint that Miles made a deal with him, which happened in issue two. And this time we see kind of the rest of that conversation and Mephisto, he says that he's just there in case Miles needs someone to talk to. Uh, which, that's, a uh, that's suspicious activity right there, and obviously we don't trust that. The flashback ends, and we see Amadeus joining Miles, asking if he's okay and if he wants to talk about it. Miles, obviously, as all angsty teenagers kind of do, says no, to which Amadeus does not take no for an answer. He talks to Miles about his feelings on the whole incident, specifically about how he won't ever really forget what happened on that day, um, all the specific details, like the smell of the wreckage, etc. Just, he's really, he's really going through the same thing Miles is in terms of pain after this incident. 
And Miles, he finally kind of starts to talk to Amadeus and he said, he asks Amadeus, did I do the right thing? Now, I wouldn't know how to answer that question and it doesn't seem like Amadeus totally does either. He says that he's not quite sure if Miles did the right thing, but in the end, what's important is that they saved people. Keeping Amadeus's words in mind, we see Miles kind of go to outside the bunker to think more about the incident, and now we get a different flashback, this time to the timeline before it was altered. We see the girl that Miles saved in issue 2, how she thanked him, etc. And then Miles starts to think about it more and he remembers saving this girl before time was altered. But then he slowly starts to realize that he doesn't quite remember saving her after time was altered. Now, you can probably guess what that means and it's a big oof. Miles rushes to Pinpoint, which is another addition to the champion's team, and asks him about his powers, which we learn are that he can create teleports. And Miles, obviously keeping that in mind, asks Pinpoint if he can do a favor for him. Now, we can kind of guess at this point that Miles wants to go back to the location of the incident to check on this girl and see if she's alright, but we don't quite get to see that happen yet because the issue cuts to Amka and Kamala coming back from the training exercise. Viv enters and tells them that, that there's a confrontation at Worthington Industries. We then see Pinpoint return and Kamala questions him on why he wasn't at practice. Now, obviously Miles has asked Pinpoint to not tell Kamala and the others what's going on with him because uh, he accidentally lets it slip that he helped out Miles and Kamala is kind of like, well, what were you doing? Why were you helping out Miles? And Pinpoint is like, let's just pretend that I didn't say that. So obviously at this point, Miles is definitely, definitely being distant from the team, even hiding things like what he's doing from them. Next, we go to the protest that Viv was telling Amka and Kamala about, which is an anti-mutant protest taking place at Worthington Industries. Worthington as in the angel X-Man Worthington, by the way, if you didn't know. I don't know. The mutant dust is there, and she's there to kind of push back against the anti-mutant crowd by preserving the X-Men's memory. Now, apparently the X-Men have disappeared or something. I should say at this point in time, I don't quite know what went down. I don't really read X-Men titles, but I don't know why anyone would try and diss the X-Men. They're pretty cool. They're pretty swell fellas. Dust releases kind of like a dust cloud on the anti-mutant crowd, and then the champions show up. When the champions arrive on the scene, they get really bombarded by the crowd. They get yelled at, they get mistaken for mutants, they get mistaken for the Young Avengers. Like, this crowd is obviously a very violent crowd that is not going to listen to them. Sam, who is flying the bunker, is trying to contact the police, but they're stuck in traffic. And then suddenly, the bunker gets shot down. Now, thank God, even though the bunker got shot down, Sam is A-OK, -okay, which is nice. And then we see the woman from the beginning of the issue who escaped from the capsule, and she's got, like, armor on, she's got a sword, she's raising it at Sam, obviously to try and, you know, enact her vengeance that she craves against him or something. And Sam seems to recognize her, which is why I mentioned earlier that I don't know if she was in another one of his books because I can't quite remember them. Uh, and he recognizes her and he calls her by her name, Caldera. And then the scene sort of ends there. And it's a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, it's not the end of the issue, but it's definitely something that I'm really excited to see pan out in the next issue. I want to know who this lady is. In the final part of this issue, we see Miles after he's arrived back on the scene of the incident from issue number two. Now, this moment to me was one of the saddest champions moments. We find out that the girl that Miles originally saved is in fact dead and her hand was the hand that replaced Kamala's hand in the last issue when the timeline was altered. So she is in fact dead and Miles failed to save her in the new timeline. We get a really sad moment between Miles and what I believe is one of the family members of the girl in which Miles apologizes for not being able to save her. The family member of course responds by saying it wasn't your fault, you did all you could do, like you did good and it's not your fault. 
Now, this is sad, obviously, because as we know, Miles did actually save her originally. It's just, it didn't end up that way in the final timeline. Pinpoint and Kamala show up. Obviously, Kamala has convinced Pinpoint to kind of squeal on helping Miles. What she says to Miles is, talk to me. So I think next issue, we'll finally get Miles talking to Kamala or even the rest of the team and telling them what happened and what's up. Uh, speaking about stuff of what I think, let's go on to, uh, my opinions about this issue. Overall, I, I liked this issue. I thought it was relatively slow compared to the last two, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, as obviously you don't want a bunch of death and destruction in every issue of your series, because then it won't have any impact. Um, but I did like this issue. I thought that... It was, it was still sad, just like the last two issues were, especially seeing Sam still struggling with the loss of his helmet and powers, um, and seeing Miles and Amadeus deal with this horrible thing that has happened. I'm very excited to see what happens with this Caldera woman. I want to know who she is, and I want to know if this is going to affect Sam's powers, him possibly getting them back, etc. Um, I'm also very excited to see Miles and Kamala finally talk. I hope, even if... Miles doesn't totally tell Kamala what happens. He's still a little bit honest with her and that they can sort of figure that stuff out. As for the rest of the issue, I just kind of generally liked it. There wasn't necessarily a whole lot that went down that I super duper liked. Uh, besides some small things, one, I liked seeing all the new Champions editions fighting together again, even if it was just a silly little training exercise where they were all showing off. It's still so cool to see all those teen heroes uh, working together and doing stuff. Also, this is going to seem really silly, but I really loved Viv's outfit in this Champions issue. Okay, she was only in it for like two panels, which, as Viv's biggest fan, did make me kind of sad. But it's so nice to see her looking cute, looking good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's all for this Champions update. Pretty uneventful, but also pretty nice. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you again for checking out my videos, um, and hopefully I can create some more content. I created a weird vlog type thingy, and I'll drop the link or something below. I also, I recorded a favorite comics video, um, and hopefully I'll edit that. So, see you next time, fellas. Hello there! You've made it to the end of my video, which means you are now legally obligated to subscribe. Not really, but it would be cool if you did, and I would really appreciate it because uh, it'd be cool, so maybe drop a sub.